the meaning of epsilon naught. Now we've seen epsilon naught, just a reminder, you may recall uh, k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space, and it's a more fundamental constant than the Coulomb constant. And permittivity of free space, what does that mean? Well, free space just means a vacuum. In fact, epsilon naught is often called the permittivity of a vacuum. If you have a conductor in a vacuum, i.e. free space, the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, tells you the ratio of charge that is permitted on that surface of the conductor per unit of electric field present in the vacuum. Let me be more specific about that. Um, the permittivity of free space basically is just defined as this ratio right here. Sigma over the E field. Uh, and it happens to equal 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th. And the units are, notice that the units are, these are the units of sigma right there over the units of electric field right there. And that gives us 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared. So this is epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space. Let me even clarify further on this thing. Uh, let's say we've got a uniform electric field of strength capital E. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a conducting slab in that field. And we have a conducting slab there. Uh, what, one thing that I will clarify here is that uh, these field lines are pointed that way over there, just like the rest of the field. And what's going to happen to the charges in this conductor? Remember that in conductors, charges can move wherever they want to. So if the field's pointing this way, again, positive charges will move in the direction of the field. So they'll all move over here, or many charges will move over here, many thousands or millions of charges. And that will leave these negative charges all over there. Now, if you wish, you can talk about electrons moving. The electrons would move to the right, leaving the nuclei abandoned to the left. Or you could just talk about moving positive charges. When we're talking about conventional current, we actually pretend that positive charges move. And that's the convention I'm going to use for this lecture, pretending that positive charges move. Um, so the positive charges move to the left, leaving these negative charges over there to the right. And... Notice that there has a surface charge density sigma has appeared right here. In fact, I'm going to call this negative sigma. This is positive sigma over here. And the ratio between sigma that appears here and this electric field is just epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is the ratio of sigma to the electric field right there. It's always the same ratio as long as out here and out here it's a vacuum. That's why they call it the permittivity of free space. It's how much charge is permitted here given this field E. So if this field strength right here, if E was 1 Newton per Coulomb, what would the surface charge density be? Well, you might guess that it would just be equal to epsilon naught. It would be 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th uh, coulombs per meter squared. If the field were twice as strong, what would sigma be? If, if the field were two newtons per coulomb, what would sigma be? It would be two times epsilon naught. So epsilon naught is just the permittivity of free space. How much charge is permitted to appear on this surface right there uh, or on this surface right there given the strength of the field? And it doesn't matter if the field started there and then the charge just was induced, like in this situation, or if you actually have a charged slab, that would create a field. It doesn't matter which was there first, it's always the same ratio. And there it is right there. Epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space. Let's go ahead and put uh, epsilon naught right into our calculators right now so we have that. All you gotta do is type in eight point eight five times ten to the which is the ee key negative twelve and then we're gonna store it so you press this store button which is right there store and then you go 
alpha, the green button on many calculators. If you press the sign button, that's alpha E, that's the E, and then you just press enter, and then you have that epsilon naught in there anytime you want. You just press second recall E again, and that'll get you epsilon naught. Now, the permittivity of free space, you can't change it, but you can change the permittivity. Uh, all you got to do is replace the vacuum with an insulator. And in this context, context, we refer to that insulator as a dielectric. And every dielectric material has a corresponding dielectric constant, kappa. That is not a K there. This right here is a kappa. Uh, and that is called the dielectric constant. And when that's present, the permittivity, no longer the permittivity of free space, the permittivity of whatever, whatever substance is in your field becomes kappa times epsilon naught right here. That's the new permittivity. It's increased by a factor kappa. So you can have a greater sigma with a smaller E field, and this is the miracle of capacitors, how we can get huge capacitances by using what are called dielectrics. And we're going to get into that in detail, but I just want to introduce to you the factor kappa changes the permittivity. Instead of the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, when you have a dielectric present in between your plates, you get a new permittivity, kappa times epsilon naught. And we'll deal with that in detail later.